Hey, and welcome back. We hope that you have already watched the wall intro. Wall is over here. If you haven't, yeah. stop what you're doing right now. Go back and watch the wall intro. Freeze. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you're ready for the second uh, motion comic in our series, and that is starring the lovely Apple Cat, Orgasmic Apple Cat, <laughs> Carnal Apple Cat, Soft, Protected <laughs> Apple Cat. <laughs> um, and just a little bit about the motion comic series. It is a seven chapter motion comic series that is inspired by the Amplify Her documentary and also created in, ah, you have it, mm. comic book, mm -hmm. graphic novel mm -hmm. that you can purchase at amplifyher.com. It has lovely, lovely, lovely artwork <laughs> and created by over 30 women in conjunction with each other. Illustrators, animators, and music producers all collaborating together to tell stories of women of our time. So can you tell us a little bit before we start rolling, um, can you tell us a little bit about what they're about to see? My comic, which is called Masquerade, is just a little snapshot of a piece of my story that myself and the writers and the animators thought would help people sort of relate to me as an artist and to each other and the shared wounds we have around uh, expressing ourselves authentically, uh, weaving our wounds into gifts, and the beautiful, chaotic art <laughs> that can come from both being expressive and just accepting that shit happens, <laughs> but making that into something that can make good shit happen. Yeah, I'll let you watch it and make a talk again afterwards. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> it's my first time hearing her live. Do you think she's nervous? <laughs> I'm so excited to see her before! I would be. They're filming the whole thing. A documentary or something. Apple Cat, 20 minutes. I performed all of my life, one way or another, hiding behind faces that suit me when I need them. I've ended up with a collection of sorts. My mind knows the truth surrounding infectious self slander and egoic motivations. Maybe, but my heart narcissistically begs to differ. Or maybe it's the other way around. Is this so wrong? Perhaps these voices of disesteem are not our own, installed inside of us like software. So many faces. How am I to choose? What's right for today? Oh, you. I remember you. You were so easy to fall into. Such a superficial fit. I remember that evening at Studio Revolution. At first it wasn't difficult being what they wanted. And so what they wanted became too much. I may have been drinking a little, or a lot. Each wave of adoration from the crowd consumed ravenously. I blocked off heart starved. My ego ever bloated. But there was always an inkling of secret disgust. Who even was I? Loved, yes. What the hell for? I didn't want to be human anymore. So I quit. Awesome show! You killed it! I buy you a drink? <sighs> hmm. She's lovely. Perhaps I can fall into her. Just for a moment. Maybe I can relax. Hey, 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 so mysterious. Buddy, can't you see I'm fucking busy? Jeez, what a bitch. Let them believe it. They wanted me to wear their faces. They wanted validation. I wanted that too. I can't give anymore. This is not me. Ugh, so damn arrogant. How could I treat them that way? How could I treat myself that way? Uh. 
These masks are projection, but they're also protection, guardians even. Each is a facet of me, each with a sacred purpose. But often, taking them off is easier said than done. Apple Cat, on in 10 minutes. Okay. At what point did I feel so unsafe? What is safety anyhow? Oh, you, yeah, the first mask, the broken warrior, a guardian birthed, critically premature. Yeah, I remember you. Get out! I can't do this anymore! Uh, you're a broken record! I'm already gone! Don't touch me! <laughs> <laughs> it's always been the same. Out of all the people that hurt her, she insists on hurting herself the most. Not again. I can't let her do it again. I will be strong for those who can't. A warrior. Mama? Mama? Chloe. Uh, sorry. You, you startled me. Why are you wearing that mask? It's silly. <gasps> I always wear them. They're... I... But... You're right. I don't need them, do I? <laughs> Through her eyes, I see there is nothing to fear. I will protect them by being authentic as me. Okay, Apple Cat, you're up. Let's go, Mama. I want to dance. They're waiting for you. <sighs> Thank you for everything. But I don't need you today. River Buddy, give it up for Apple Cat! It's easy to craft from the shrapnel and put on the masks. But when you find someone who can see behind them, genuinely seeing all of that is you, it invites others to do the same, mirroring all that we are, unabashed. Piece by piece, they all unfold. And through its unfolding, we watch the cosmos whirl. Be seen. Try it. Then, just look. You very well might see something that changes everything. Oh, hi. Welcome back. Join us in taking off your mask. Yeah. Is that cheesy? I love cheese. Okay. So let's get vulnerable, shall we? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about masks first? Do you want to talk about... Yeah, I mean, something I really wanted to depict in the motion comic is that there is actually nothing wrong with having masks. I think 
it's almost like just in our human nature to create um, pieces of ourself that are adaptable to the moment. Mm -hmm. um, right. People will often say like, you know, just don't wear masks. But each one of these masks is, is a piece of us, and we're just using it as a, like like a toolkit. Right. Like what what is what serves right now. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to speak to about in, in, in it, the comic was uh, the awareness of the mask and the knowing when to take it off and knowing many of us get caught and we start to think like this is the only mask, this is, this is who I am. Uh, nothing can change and we, we get lost in the, the world of the particular uh, aspect or archetype of ourselves um, and it, that starts to get just really skewed. During the end, when uh, Chloe comes in and she starts to speak to me and saying like that, the mask is silly, why are you wearing that? And I said, well, I always wear masks. And I have this revelation of like, like you know, I like, don't have to wear a mask. And in particular, I'm about to perform in front of this large group of people, this crowd. And I, I start to feel uh, empowered to show up, like truly show up. Uh, vulnerable w without this mask and uh, that ends up in itself being a strength because if you see at the end of the comic the masks of the crowd start to dissipate and then they, they dance with elation and, and like in a static way um, because someone they see as like potentially like a role model or or, or what have you uh, showed themselves in a very vulnerable way and, and allowed them or gave them permission or inspired them to, to also like show up vulnerably and uh, naked in a way. <laughs> well, I think that's so important. I mean, for first and foremost, and something I think that movies and comics and everything in general just mix is how fucking complex we are. We mm -hmm. are complex beings mm -hmm. and there are so many different parts of ourselves. And I think the vulnerability point is such an important point. At one of the Amplify Her screenings for the documentary, I remember uh, an, an older woman coming up to me and saying, that she cried really hard watching the movie because mm. for the first time she felt safe to be emotional and vulnerable. And this is, mm. you know, a woman that definitely was part of earlier feminist movements and that's what I think she admired so much about what's happening right now for women in feminism mm. is the fact that we're stating like that being emotional or being vulnerable is not a negative thing. In fact, that sort of value or that trait, um, that feminine trait is actually something that is is important and valuable and I think it's really interesting to see that in music and the way that you're you know mm -hmm. putting vulnerability out in on the dance floor yeah I definitely think that it's like a modern wave of feminism where we're allotted a, we're allotted a lot more space to be like in our sorrow and you know in the the first or second wave um, it was more about anger and rage and like fist to the sky which there's definitely some of that now but like and we wouldn't be here without that no it's thank you but back then it was like the only way like being sorrowful or crying maybe it was feeling maybe it was weak or maybe they felt that it was weak um and the only way that you could be sad and feel powerful is to get angry but uh amongst other women and amongst people like we're, we're allotted the space to feel sad and to feel those emotions and let them flow through us as our power Something that I like heard you saying just now and something I like about your piece um, is that the vulnerability that you were talking about that um, I think a lot of people who, who don't know what DJing is like wouldn't think of it as a vulnerable position because mm. you're in front of like the hundreds, thousands of people. Um, that's a position of power the way most people would look at it, right? Um, but it's for me at least like the acting is like a as a channel mm -hmm. um and like in order to be a clear channel you know i have to let go of my own ego mm -hmm. and and just serve whatever needs to happen um and and i think it's that that type of it's like the closest thing to a blackout i've ever experienced sober mm -hmm. is like I, I it's a different i i'm more aware and yet also less aware mm -hmm. um because i i'm like i feel I'm plugged into a different like level of energetic listening and reacting and um 
And so it's a different kind of vulnerable, I mm -hmm. think, than probably most people are aware of. Mm -hmm. So what was, what was the question? There... Well, if, if you identify with that also, like if this concept of like the position of power and yet it being vulnerable and like serving others and not having a role yourself, you know? Absolutely. It's, it's one of the reasons why I, I prefer to have um, art, other artists on the stage with me. So like other musicians or dancers or even like live paintings and like to me it's sharing the stage. It, um, it just allows for uh, more energy for me uh, to, to, so I can continue on doing what I'm doing. Um, as well, <clears throat> it's nice to not always be the focal point because I, what's on my mind is, is the crowd and the music. But the, what you said about channel like totally resonates. Um, there have been times where I've been recording a set and I've done some sort of live rework or what have you, and I can in no way figure out how I did it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what the hell? Like, and I've tried like several times to, to sort of like replicate in the same way how I did it. And I just- So wait a second, you're not just pressing spacebar? The space. <laughs> well, I know, but sometimes I've passed it really, really fast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, like there's definitely. I don't want to discredit it and say none of it was me because a lot of people would say like, oh no, it wasn't me. I just let things come to me from, from the wherever the ether. Um, it's both. Like it's me. It's my internal world finally being allowed to come out, and it's an invitation for the other things to come through me. Like, I feel very inhabited mm -hmm. uh, by something <laughs> when, uh, when I perform. Afterwards, it's like... It's like when you've taken a jog and you just need to, like... Like, you, you've sprinted and you just need a second. And there's been so many times, like, very much, like, in the comic, when there's, like, one of the masks that I'm wearing and uh, she's just trying to find solace in someone. Uh, and this guy, he comes up and he's like, oh, I want you, I want to talk to you, you're great, we should want to drink, and like, and I snap. I snap at the guy, which is not cool, and I get pissed off about later. But it's just like, please, like, I, I'm so tired. <laughs> and uh, usually right after a set, like, I just need to take like five minutes to just breathe from my sprint. Mm -hmm. um, often I'm like shaking. Because it's it's like I'm feeling whatever is coming through me. I'm feeling every single person. I'm feeling my own internal world, and it's absolutely like you know borderline orgasmic sometimes. And like I guess maybe I'm shaking like after an orgasm. I'm like whoa, um, and it's it's very intense. And I you know I know sometimes I come across as a bitch or dismissive or like even like uh, vacant but I just need that five minutes to like allow myself, like just me, to return to my body. So I think one of the other masks is, is, is a harder one. It's like where the mm. vulnerability really comes in. And I don't know how much you want to say about that. Um, but I think I've, I've actually shared it with friends of mine who were going through some really dark moments. And um, I had one person who I shared it with early before it came out uh, wrote, write me back after because she was going through something super dark and and um, and she she just she was cry basically crying and she was saying thank you like I just needed to know that someone else was feeling the way that I was that I was feeling and I think in a lot of um, media and women uh, that that we get sort of exposed to is we don't get those sort of authentic stories of stuff mm -hmm. and sometimes they can be really painful and associated you know, with, with dark times, and but we need that sense of connection to kind of feel like we're not alone in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how much you want to talk about that, but I know that that scene is super powerful for many people. And I hope that some of you out there feel a little less alone um, because of it. Um, yeah, it was a really tough, a tough part of my story to like release out there into the world. and, and uh, when I was speaking with, with the writer, oh, well, I, I mean, I co-wrote it, but when I was speaking with the artist and the writer, uh, essentially we sat down with them and, uh, they said, you know, like, we, we were given a bunch of prompts and questions, uh, and one of the questions was, like, 
what is your greatest wound or something like that? Deepest, deepest, deepest wound. wound. Um, and of course, you know, we could all, I could muse on that all day, but like, uh, the first one that came to my mind was, was this one. And I was like, all right, well, here we go. I'm going to tell two strangers of something that's probably going to freak them out. Um, but I told them and, uh, about this story. And for those of you who have seen the film, uh, my mom and I were incredibly close, like best friends, always together. Um, but sometimes there were explosive uh, instances. And this comic itself is kind of like an... Uh, it's like a bunch of instances that happened, like squished into one, because we only had five minutes. And they did. And it, it was at like that point, at some point, uh, like little Maya, little Apple Cat, you know, like had to stop being a kid. And, you know, she became the warrior um, instead of, like, perpetuating her victim state. Um, later on, I choose to be neither, and to be vulnerable. Like, sometimes you got to put down the warrior mask, and sometimes you need to put down the victim mask. Mm. Like, they're both important, but they don't always serve. And it's still really tough for me to watch. Like, there's parts of it that are just... It's hard, and I and, and I'm sometimes I get scared that that, that people are, are going to be triggered by it or not understand. Uh, in particular, the trigger thing, like mm. I try and tell people beforehand, is like you know just so you know, like there's instances that might make you uncomfortable. But also, I'm glad you're going to be uncomfortable because you know, like where stuff happens is like it ha happens outside of your comfort area, and sometimes we have to look at these real problems, and you know like. Like domestic violence or self-harm or like issues within families uh it happens everywhere yeah. and it's important for us to talk about it well and I, I think one thing on on just the mask itself so we talk about it being a warrior mask and so many people would think that that would be a masculine trait mm -hmm. but i think what's kind of interesting is that it is the forgotten feminine in oh, yeah. so many ways and it is actually very much a feminine trait mm -hmm. and i know that you like to bring in your music and in your and in your personality and your character that sort of forgotten feminine mm -hmm. power and sort of the mythic power to your sets and i think that's really important to know yeah absolutely women are fierce and powerful and transmuting and uh the kali aspect or even like the durga aspect of like the goddess can just come in and sometimes things just need to be stomped and sometimes when destroy. we dance we just need to stomp and destroy and like dance away those demons and uh, I mean, you know, men can dance like that and women can dance like that and we get together and it's, it's important. Um, it's actually though the, the like nurturing mothering aspect of me that, um, is the polar opposite of that, but they, they dance so beautifully together. Like I want to nurture the world, but I also want to smash the things <laughs> that would hurt the world. <laughs> so that's like a perfect segue because we have a special guest. We do have a special guest. Um, we are introducing our special guest, Chloe Bun. Chloe Bun. Oh. <laughs> are you okay? I'm okay. Okay. And Chloe. you'll notice she is a fair amount bigger than uh -uh. she was in the film. Are if you've you calling seen it. me fat? I don't know how to. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a. Can we start that over? Nope. Nope. That's There's no reduce. Damn. This is live. Live on oh, YouTube. Hi. So, Chloe, you want to tell us a little bit about. You were you were in the motion comic, right? Y yeah. Yes. I, yes, I was. You were. What was it like doing the voiceover for your character? Um, well, it was kind of fun. I mean, I it was it was it was just like um, it was really fun. Uh, it was complicated at first because I didn't know like to play my younger self or to play because I was like five I think when it first started and um when the movie like ended I was about eight when also when we did the uh eight or nine when we did the uh the comic strip recording thing mm -hmm. what do you think of the final product like what do you think of the the whole shebang I was really wowed it was awesome you liked it yeah cool yeah. basically like in the moment my character touches um my mom and um, I think she realizes that she doesn't need the mask and she can just go up there and DJ maskless. Because mm -hmm. that's a word. 
It is. <laughs> it's absolutely a word. I think the only other thing that I did want to say, um, let's talk a little bit about the artists. In the Masquerade comic, we featured artwork by Art by Tuna, mm -hmm. um, Rachel Petrovich. Mm -hmm. As well as Eileen. And then, yeah, and then um, Elaine. Elaine. Shit. <laughs> and then as the, well as Elaine. The animation was then later done by Elaine. Mm -hmm. uh, it was super uh, fascinating and working with them because they they both came, all three of us came from very different stories. And um, I think my poetic nature and way of speaking was a little confusing <laughs> to them at some times. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I was like, it's poetry. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> But I actually really appreciated uh, their input because, you know, sometimes I don't make any sense to people. That's, that's why I'd, I don't mind. But We want to see your face. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was actually really cool having a, a diverse uh, roster of artists offering uh, their particular uh, flavor of beauty. I mean, Tuna is a phenomenal artist, and I know that you chose her for me because of the, like, the nature of my, my like cartoony, like silly, like anime-esque self. Like mm -hmm. I love that type of artist, uh, artistry. I love that type of, of animation and manga and Japanese influences and others. Like Tuna's ability to capture my likeness, I was just so stoked. Like like she, she got the, the cheekbones down. They were just sharp. And uh, yeah, it definitely softened me when I first saw that they, the um, the artistic rendition of me it softened me and made me so excited like oh wow this is really happening like I'm getting made into this cartoon um, and it's me like I saw this cartoon version of myself looking back at me like like living the life that I live and it, it just hit home like oh wow this is this is happening like I'm putting this out there and um, it's a very Comic books have a very particular type of magic that they can they can take uh, pictures and words and put them together in a way that a picture alone couldn't personify or a book alone couldn't personify. Like they are their own like very potent uh, medium. Like should they be used as such? They don't rot your brain. That like they used to say in the '60s or '70s or whatever. Like they're just I I mean when you guys told me that we were making we were getting a graphic novel. Like I have books or boxes and boxes. Of graphic novels and uh, like it was the first thing I did when I got this and I smelled it I'm like ah I smell like such a graphic novel like like that glue <laughs> and um, I was gonna say the the other interesting thing about this um, about tuna who worked on yours is she also collaborated with the body paint artist mm -hmm. so Kristen Urban Hart Grant mm -hmm. who painted you all up as your own superhero wins yeah this is super um, cool yeah it and was really long she, so <laughs> she she did all the, uh, Kristen did all the poses and the initial sketch work and then mm -hmm. uh, Tuna went in and actually did the rest of the drawings, which yeah. I'm super stoked on because I think it turned out really great. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys tune in for the next uh, motion comic and hopefully there'll be more onesies. <laughs> and I think she's going to take me onesie shopping. You're going to take me onesie shopping, right? And we'd like to thank what? Chloe for dressing us for yeah. this event. This is well, fashion by clothes, Chloe. Onesies by Chloe. One, onesies by Chloe. Except this one. This one's mine. But she shares with me sometimes. Yeah, I. Whenever you want a onesie, I'll give it to you. But most, of, most of my onesies are so too small, except for. Um, I can fit in all your onesies, just not the. A lot of my onesies are too small. Not the small pushing one, because that one gives me camel toe. Me. You're not tall, but you're taller than me. No one likes a unicorn camel toe. It's the best type of camel toe. Unicorn toe. I think you're actually a foot taller.